are the officials for tonight's game here at Redbird Arena, which is now underway. The opening tap is out of bounds. It's going to go to Bradley. The Braves in their road red uniforms with white trim, and Illinois State the opposite. White home uniforms with red trim. So right away, Josiah Strong gets the Terry Roberts assignment. We talked in the open about how well he has been playing. Cy Chapman starts on rink mast, and that's probably the two guys you're going to look at early if Bradley is going to get the offense going. So interesting to see. That's how Illinois State's going to start the matchups. Freeman's ankle looks pretty good there as he jumped into the passing lane and knocked that pass out of bounds. Sunday night at Redbird Arena, Bradley and Illinois State. Terry Roberts' first shot is a three that rims out, and the Redbirds come away with it. Quickly down the floor, Kendall Lewis! The traditional confetti throw in the first basket here in Redbird Arena against Bradley. We talked Kendall Lewis in the open. Great job there. Bradley just loses him in transition, and that's something we talked about. It's only State can get out and run, get easy baskets. It helps get the offense going. Nice penetration. Roberts to Rink Mast, who missed the shot, couldn't get the tip to go either, and it's cleared by Antonio Reeves. Redbirds playing their first home game in 24 days. It's been a long time since the fans here have seen Illinois State. Chapman works on Connor Hickman, flipped it up and in, a three-point opportunity. Right there, Bradley got stuck in a switching defense, and Connor Hickman, Illinois State's coaches feel like Cy Chapman is a mismatch for just about anyone on the floor for Bradley, but especially 6'3", true freshman Connor Hickman as Cy Chapman, great job with the recognition. He had a guard on him and went right to the basket as opposed to fading away and will be rewarded with the and one free throw here. Chapman looks a lot more active. He played in Wednesday's game in Des Moines against Drake, but he only had one day of practice in prep of that game. One of those COVID issues for the Redbirds. And now an offensive foul against the Braves. That's going to go against Roberts. Certainly some juice. And you mentioned, Kurt, the Redbirds haven't been home in quite some time. The best crowd we've seen probably since the Murray State game here in Red Arena. The Redbirds giving them something to make noise about early here. As you see, Josiah Strong just does a great job beating Terry Roberts to the spot. An early offensive foul on Roberts, who has been playing extremely well. Great defense by Josiah Strong there. Strong tried to loft the pass to Chapman, but it's a turnover. Leons comes away with it. Roberts behind a screen from Rink Mast. He knocks down the three. And right there, you got a really good look at what Bradley wants to do with Rink Mast. He's a great passer. That one, not a pass. But they're going to run a lot of elbow actions. And not the traditional back-to-the-basket post player so much as Rink Mast there. Gets the ball in the high post. A handoff to Terry Roberts. Illinois State went under. We'll see if they do it differently as I'm anticipating the ball going to Mast there multiple times in that elbow action Bradley likes to run. There's the screen from Mast. Roberts keeps it, steps back. Another three rimmed out. Antonio Reeves, Illinois State's leading scorer, is yet relatively full tonight. Guys that did not play in the game in Des Moines. Ryan Schmidt is dressed. Um, Liam McChesney, guys that did not play in the last couple of games are available tonight for the Redbirds, so we're seeing maybe a full complement from both teams. Cy Chapman off the nice feed from Reeves. Great pass by Antonio Reeves, Illinois State, finding something with that ball screen as that's now Cy Chapman's second roll to the basket. See if Bradley switches up what they're going to do down there on that end with Cy Chapman. Roberts. Passed up the three, gives it to Jason Kent from the corner, and he knocks down the three. Kent has come on real strong for the Braves in the last couple of weeks. A tremendous one more, and we've seen Terry Roberts get his shot attempts up right there, unselfishly makes the one more pass. Kent, 57 of 97 shots this year, are three-pointers, and so great awareness by Terry Roberts, who leads the Valley and assists right now to pick up his first of the night. Antonio Reeves with a contested shot. He Lost the dribble for a minute, picked it back up. That's his first attempt of the night. His three is missed, and now Hickman penetrates for the Braves.
Another open look for three, Roberts. Meeting number 135 between the two teams. The Redbirds have the advantage in the games they've played here against Bradley at Redbird Arena and Horton Fieldhouse. Reeves lost the dribble, looking for help. This is Lewis. Cleared by Mast. We're seeing Howard Fleming in the game for the first time for Illinois State. He wears number three. He's trying to bounce back from an ankle injury. Roberts may have stepped on the sideline, and he did. Dan Muller took that 30 that turned into the media after a failed switch on the defensive end, and it seems like some of the Redbirds right now are, are getting confused on what coverages they're trying to run. Bradley likes to space the floor with all five guys, and we've seen several different actions. We talked about the elbow. They've set actual ball screens. They've slipped, and so Illinois State seems to be trying to switch everything right now and just a miscommunication and see if Dan Muller shored that up during the timeout. Lewis works the baseline, tried to flip it up. Leon's got a block. He leads the team and blocks his first of the night. Not only leads the team, Kurt, but second in the Valley in block shots. And right there you see why the length of Leon's. He got beat by a step, and Kendall Lewis is not a small wing player. And Leon's right there still able to use his length both on the block shot and now on the offensive rebound here. Bradley is a terrific rebounding team. Offensive rebound is going to give another... Look for the offense here. Roberts penetrates, tried to flip it to Mass. Ball's on the floor, and it's Josiah Strong who scrums it out. He's going to work on Lyons, and now Chapman trails the play. His three is missed. He had his first three-pointer of the year on Wednesday in Des Moines. He's not really a three-point shooter. Lyons looking inside to rink Mast. A nice entry pass. And you see right there, and Kurt, you mentioned Cy Chapman, not necessarily a three-point shooter. Probably not the shot you want, as that's just an unfamiliar territory for him to be on the floor and gets beat back by Mass and is out of position for the easy basket. And that's what happens. Bad offense can sometimes lead to bad defense, and that's what happened to Cy Chapman right there. Deshaun Henry is at the scores table. He'll check in his first action in about a month. That'll be in the next whistle. Here's Chapman. Lost the dribble. Now it's strong with five on the shot clock. He shoots over Hickman. Offensive rebound from Lewis. And that right there looks to be the matchup to watch early. Lewis muscles Leon's under the basket for the offensive rebound after Leon's got one down here and blocked Lewis's layup. And two similar players in build and length and skill set. We'll see if those two continue to go at it on the offensive glass. Roberts tries to create. He finds Mast. Mast with his second field goal. He's been on a roll for the Braves, a couple of consecutive 20-point games for Rink Mast coming into this one. And now a steal. Roberts takes it away from Josiah Strong. Kent with a pump fake. Now it's Hickman from the corner. His three is missed. And it's off of Cy Chapman and out of bounds. The Braves will get it back. And right now, Kurt, we talked in the keys about the rebounding, and Bradley is crashing the offensive glass. They have three already, and that one not going to go as an offensive rebound, but off of Cy Chapman. And so right now, four extra possessions in the first seven minutes for Bradley. And we talked about the Cy Chapman conditioning issues after a non-COVID illness, and he heads to the bench, but Mass just moving him around, and unfortunately, just not ready to play off the bench are Jai and Sissoko, and Leon slips in, and a quick foul on Hirona Sissoko. So Sissoko is in, Abdu Jai is in for Illinois State. Deshaun Henry, his first appearance in about a month for the Braves, he's in, so is Billy Tavaninen. That's him with the three, and it's out of bounds. Mikey Howell also in the game for the first time, so both teams making substitutions at that last whistle. Different units on the floor. And another breakdown there, strangely enough, by the Redbirds on the inbounds, and Tavaninen looked like he washed his hands on his jersey afterwards, maybe some sweat as he let that one go about three feet short, but a wide open step in three pointer off an inbounds play and so not the defense that Illinois State needs to be playing to contest shots here against the Braves in the early going. Here's Henry. Now Mikey Howell. Guarded by Freeman. 
Kent's going to try another three, and he knocked that one down. Jason Kent has a couple of threes. The Braves have shot the three well here. Last year, their game here at Redbird Arena, they didn't hit a three until the second half. Not the case tonight. And unfortunately, more of the same from Illinois State as ninth in the Valley in three-point defense and offensive rebounding. And right now, strength on strength, Bradley is doing what they would like and executing and knocking down shots and taking advantage of two Redbird weaknesses in the perimeter defense and offensive rebounding. Now it's Tavanen with another three look. Long rebound to Abdu Jai. Quickly up the floor, Reeves works on Henry, takes it to the rim, can't finish though. Redbirds are the highest scoring team in the Valley. Held to nine points though in the first nearly nine minutes. Difficult shot scooped in by Mikey Howell. He's the grad school student, the San Diego native comes to Bradley from Cal San Diego. The Braves have doubled up Illinois State. And far more of a passer, usually average six assists a game at San Diego, like you said, Kurt. As Reeves gets on the board, you'd have to think the guy who scored in double figures every game this season for the Redbirds was going to get it going early. First points of the night for Antonio Reeves, averaging just over 20 for the Redbirds. Tavaninen thought about the three. Now it's Leons. He thought about the three too, but it was Fleming who came over and had him think otherwise. Five on the shot clock. Another three is drained in. Mikey Howell off the bench. Five quick points for him. Braves are shooting it at 50% here on the road. Eight of their first 16. Fleming is fouled as he penetrated. Like you said, Kurt. Bradley just starting to stretch it out a little bit early as Fleming cuts it in to single digits. We'll see if Illinois State can't get the game into more of their strength as opposed to Bradley's. Zeke Montgomery, a freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, has checked in for Bradley, his first appearance tonight. And Fleming splits the free throws. First look at a press here from Illinois State as we'll see if they drop back into that 2-3 zone or if they're going to go back to the man. And it looks like they are going to test the zone out here. And so far, that ball screen offense really hurting the Redbirds. And right there, that's Tavanine. Tavanine. Yeah, Tavanine got a nice feed there from Roberts. He so did. Bradley it looked like he got away with a little stutter step as Chapman seemed to alter it. But right now, Illinois State switches the defense and still gives up an easy one. Tavanainen's first basket of the night. Here's Josiah Strong trying to slip a pass, and Tavanainen picked up the foul. That'll be the first foul against Vile Tavanainen, and the fourth team foul against the Braves. Chapman to Fleming, looking inside to Lewis. But instead, get, they keep it at the perimeter. You get the sense right now, when we talked about the shutdowns and the postponements, and, and the Illinois State coaches talked about how with that lack, the lack of practice time with everyone healthy, they've struggled to find a rhythm, and you get that feeling right now on the offensive end with the Redbirds is another offensive rebound here by the Braves. And a great feed from Howell to Tavanainen, who's working the baseline. Mikey Howell off the Bradley bench has been outstanding here in the first half. Strong tries to create. Now it's Reeves. Dribble it off his knee. Ten on the shot clock. Lewis. Backs in on Roberts, draws a double team. Now it's Fleming for three. That's in. That was a really big shot by Howard Fleming. He hasn't played since December 21st, his first shot attempt. And the offense for the Redbirds was stagnant there. A lot of standing around individual play. And Howard Fleming bails him out with a late clock three-pointer. We'll see if that can't turn the momentum. It's going to have to be something here for Illinois State 
if they're going to cut into this Bradley lead. Difficult move by Roberts on the baseline, and he flipped it in as the shot clock was winding down. And Terry Roberts with an eight-point opening half. And right now, Illinois State is finding it hard. 6'11", Junior. Where's number 50? So the Redbirds have Schmidt, Lewis, Washington, Freeman, and Strong on the floor. Leons, Mast, Roberts, Kent on the floor. And uh, Connor Hickman, another five on the floor for the Braves. Kent, fade away. Freeman all the way down, lost the ball. Braves have a four on one. Leons fouled, and an opportunity for a three point play. Malavai trying to double up Illinois State here, but the free throw is missed. Illinois State with the same lineup out of the timeout. They went to a high low to Ryan Schmidt. Right now, nothing really on the offensive end working for the Redbirds. Bradley doing a great job pressuring the ball, keeping it 25 feet plus out as Illinois State has settled for several mid-range jump shots as you see another one here from Mark Freeman and just kind of not able to get anything going right now on the offensive end, Kurt. Now Roberts behind another screen in his third three-point make of the opening half. He's in double figures now with 11 points. And Illinois State's going to have to do something different as Mark Freeman went under the ball screen there. And rink mast has been a mismatch and not necessarily on the box score as he only has six points, two assists and a rebound. But what he is doing as a screener is really causing problems for the Redbird defense. He sprung Terry Roberts, all three of Roberts' three-pointers off of ball screen so far. Now a deep three from Roberts, and that goes in. A heat check points, ten boards and seven assists. And he might be on pace for a triple-double here tonight if he keeps this up. And so far in our first look at Terry Roberts, he's one of those guys who's always around the basketball. It seems to find him. And that, that is what happens when you have good basketball players with good IQs is they tend to evaluate the game and what is going to happen. And Terry Roberts finds himself right now in the action a lot. Rebound bucket for Cy Chapman breaks a two-and-a-half-minute scoreless drought for the Redbirds. Chapman is Illinois State's leading scorer. He has seven. Reeves now with the Robert to Simon and Fleming in the game and see if some length can give him some issues as Mark Freeman and Josiah Strong have yet to slow down Terry Roberts. They're going to go with a longer guard and see if that does anything. Henry lost the ball out of bounds, so that's a turnover. That's the fifth for the Braves here in the opening half. So right now with just under six, down 18, Illinois State not going to get it all back here, but... Kind of a reset here in the last 5.30 if Strong can get this to go. And now you've got an opportunity here to try to get back into it. And like I just said, you're not going to win the game here, but certainly if you can get it to single digits, you feel pretty good about where things are given how you've played so far if you're Dan Muller's Redbirds. Fleming. There's going to be a foul on Connor Hickman. So we've got a 16-point game with 5-10 left here. We'll see what Illinois State is able to do. Bradley, five of their last seven from the floor, a few stops, a few baskets, and Illinois State can start to breathe a little bit. And you got the sense when it was 35-15 and the quick timeout by Muller after the three-pointer, maybe things were going to start slipping away. And so a big opportunity here for Illinois State to try to get this to single digits before the half. Lewis tries a three. He knocked down four three-pointers against Drake on Wednesday night. Montgomery's going to try a three. That is in. Boy, the Braves are comfortable at the three-point line here tonight. And not to sound like a broken record, it's the ball screen defense again. Cy Chapman caught standing there and wasn't sure if it was a switch, a hedge, if they were going to go under, if they were going to shade it. And Zeke Montgomery walks into a three-pointer. 
Difficult shot high off the window for Antonio Reeves, a little runner off the glass. Bradley is eight of 16 from beyond the arc here in the opening half. Liam McChesney has taken off his warm-ups and he's at the scorer's table to check in for the Redbirds. Montgomery's gonna try another three. Rebound goes to Henry. Now Lands, his three is missed. Fleming is fouled as he tried to penetrate. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 3.31 to go here, opening half. Bradley 38, Illinois State 21. Illinois State University. Bradley leads Illinois State on the scoreboard and in the rebounding column, a 19 to 11 advantage on the glass in their win over Evansville on a Wednesday. They out-rebounded the Aces 47 to 26. And the Braves have only been out-rebounded five times this year. They're the leader in the league in rebounding and they're showing why here tonight. You get those second chance opportunities and that really makes your offense better. And a lot of that largely without Deshaun Henry, who has good size, but the addition of Malave Leons has been a huge one for Bradley in the rebounding department. His length, we talked about it with Lewis, but when you put Jason Kent, Malave Leons, and Rink Mast out there, you have good size, and even Mikey Howell for a point guard. And so it's a good it's a good size rebounding lineup as well. The physicality Bradley plays with does a lot for them on that rebounding stat. And Mark Freeman, Illinois State's point guard, playing in his first game since suffering an ankle injury in Illinois State's loss at Wisconsin a couple of days after Christmas. Seeing his first action since. That's him penetrating. He lost the, his footing and lost the basketball, which was just thrown to the ceiling as the shot clock was winding down. Shot clock violation against Illinois State. And those are the frustrating ones, I think, for Redbird fans as you get a dead ball timeout and an opportunity to drop a play and come out and get a shot clock violation. We've talked about cutting into the lead, and instead of coming out with something designed, Mark Freeman loses the footing, but Chesney throws one up and a shot clock violation, and Bradley has an opportunity to turn this into a 20-point lead, potentially. Foul is going to be on Strong as he was down there with the big-bodied rink mast. Bradley shooting it at 54% here in the first half. They look very comfortable, especially from beyond the arc. It's been a, a good opening half for the Braves and a rough one for the Redbirds who are trying to turn things around in the final three minutes of this half. And there's a steal from Antonio Reeves, who was then fouled by Kent. Good read by Antonio Reeves as Mark Freeman closed the gap on what Bradley was trying to do, throwing it to the top of the key and forced lob and the length of Antonio Reeves tips it, gets hit and goes to the line. And we'll see again if Illinois State can get it to 15 here with 257, has the opportunity to attempt to cut this to single digits before the half. But Illinois State this year, three and seven when trailing at the half. And certainly right now, looks to be headed that direction and try to reverse that trend at least a little bit. Redbirds in the bonus here for the final three minutes of this first half. Trying to make some hay maybe from the foul line. Reeves, Illinois State's leading scorer, has six points. Again, he averages 20 a game. So here's your first look at another ball screen coverage where they decide to what's called blitz and they double the ball screen there instead of switching it. And unfortunately, Abdu Jai got beat Turned the corner, Terry Roberts found a shooter in the corner. Leons couldn't get it to go though, and so at least Illinois State trying something different there as we've talked about, you're gonna see a lot of ball screens. Had a little bit of success there, we'll see if they continue to try to blitz it when Terry Roberts come off the ball screen. Rink Mass left open for three. Long rebound to Tavaninen.
Bradley has now missed 15 shots in the half and offensive rebounded six of those, not counting the one that went out of bounds. And there they again double the ball screen and just lazy defense by the Redbirds on the back side of it. And that's what you can't happen is when you have a mismatch right there, Bradley did exactly what they needed to do. Terry Roberts pulls the double team out to half court, finds the high post, gets numbers, and it's a three on two. And Bradley knows how to execute that as well as anyone there for the dunk. Leons is not made a three-point shot. He's a good three-point shooter, but he surely, surely can dunk it when you're, you're uncontested there. And now the Redbirds are going to get back to the free throw line off the missed shot and an offensive rebound. That fouls on Terry Roberts. So it's Liam McChesney who did not play in the game against Drake. In fact, he hasn't scored in nearly a month. He has not scored since the Redbird win here at Redbird Arena against Texas San Antonio. Sophomore from British Columbia. Interesting so far for the Redbirds is typically we've talked about kind of getting out of your rhythm. At this point in the year, your rotation is usually solidified, and instead Dan Muller has played 11 different players tonight in the first half who have all played multiple minutes. And so in search of something to try to get it to click on either end of the floor, offensively or defensively, and yet to find exactly the recipe he's looking for with the five on the floor who are going to have success. Seven to shoot. Howell works on Cy Chapman. Chapman may have got a piece of that one. Now it's strong behind the screen from Chapman. McChesney off the fake. Now strong. His pass is cleaned up by McChesney. 15 on the shot clock and Connor Hickman just tackled Antonio Reeves. Brian Wordle not happy at all with Malavai Lands. Had a couple of words with him there. Leon's just a little soft to the basketball and looked like he kind of started to head to the other end before he secured it. And a great play by Liam McChesney to tip the ball to himself around the head of Leon's. And what looked like a sure layup before Liam McChesney got his hands on it turns into two free throws for Reeves. Credit to McChesney for the effort play there. Get another look at that sequence. The end of it there, the foul that's sending Reeves to the foul line. 13th in the scoring in the country with his 20.8 points per game scoring average. It's been tough sledding here tonight, but he's making some hay at the free throw line. He now has eight points. And that's partly why Brian Wardle is upset as a scorer like Antonio Reeves sometimes just needs to see the ball go in the basket and giving him two easy free throws. He's had to work extremely hard for everything he's gotten so far, 0 for 2 from the three-point line but really easy when you get to stand at the free throw line and that's why Brian Wardle was upset. Well, the Redbirds have an opportunity to hold for the final shot if they want to do it. Redbirds trying to carve into this 14 point Bradley lead. The Braves have really controlled this one from about the two minute mark of the game. Corner three, Howard Fleming couldn't get it. Got an open, and Fleming gets the nod. And Bradley sends its original starting five out with Roberts, Howell, I'm sorry, uh, Hickman, Leons, Kent, and Rick Mast. First possession, second half. Chapman, nice jump shot over Rick Mast. And a really good first possession for Illinois State there to move the ball side to side. And that's one of the problems with the Redbird offense is the ball tends to stick a little bit, doesn't go side to side and make the defense work. And there they reverse the floor, get a post touch for Cy Chapman. An early bucket, an early stop, and a run out. And Fleming is going to get to the free throw line. He drew contact there on Malavai Leons. Great job by the Redbirds getting out in transition, pitching it ahead, and right there, you almost wish Howard Fleming with his size just goes straight to the rim and finishes, and potential for an and one to play through contact as opposed to going to the reverse layup and looking for the contact, but either way, 
Fleming to the line, and Illinois State has the potential here to cut it to a 10-point lead for the first time in a long time. Again, Fleming missed two of the last three games for the Redbirds with his own ankle injury. There you see the contact under the basket. And it looked like Leon's almost was going to concede the basket to Fleming there and give up the layup and instead ends up with a foul. Fleming misses the first, but like I said, that was one where Howard could have potentially just gotten to the backboard and finished as Leon's looked like he was willing to not give up the foul and concede the layup. Now it's Kent left open from beyond the arc. Strong tries to create. This is Reeves now. Fleming again. Open from the corner is Lewis. Roberts behind a screen from Mass. Now lobs it for Rink Mass who can't finish. Now it's Reeves, penetrate and kick. Josiah Strong, open three, that's in. Really good one more by Howard Fleming and a good push ahead by Antonio Reeves and that's Josiah Strong's first really good look at a three pointer. He shot the ball extremely well so far this year. Eighth in the NCAA in three point percentage but has been trying to force it tonight and that's his first one where he was more of a spot up shooter. Great look by Howard Fleming and Illinois State has cut it to a single digit lead here. Fleming's gonna pick up the foul, that three point make, the first of the night for Josiah Strong. Now Bradley was slow to start the first half, about 90 seconds or two minutes in before they scored, and here they are two minutes into this one, still looking for their first basket of the second half. The crowd looking to get back involved for Illinois State, and right there they wanted to travel on Terry Roberts, but starting the half about as good as you can if you're the Redbirds to try to get the crowd back involved, active and energetic if you're gonna make a comeback here. So the Braves turn it over with Leons there, and so now Illinois State with another opportunity with a basketball. Lewis to Chapman now. He's going to work on rink mast. Fake left, shoot right. Missed it. Fleming, the offensive rebound for Illinois State. He feeds it to Strong, who can't finish. Now in transition, Hickman. Kent on Fleming. Contact, blocking foul on Illinois State. Chapman came over to help. And Cy Chapman is still down, as is Jason Kent. That was a big time collision. It will be interesting to see who got the worst of it here. Chapman up, he was rubbing the back of his head. Can't quite see what Jason Kent has maybe lost his wind or got hit in the ribs, and that was a hard fall for both players. Kent trying to Stand up straight now. Jason Kent has really come on strong for the Braves recently, averaging 10 points per game in the last nine. He's gonna stay in the game it looks like and make his way to the free throw line, but Deshaun Henry re-enters the game. And again, Henry has missed about a month of action with a concussion, this is the first game for which he has been cleared. And so Henry, the junior from Saskatchewan, out since December the 18th. And the Braves are six and 15 in his career when he's not playing. So, you know, sometimes when they say, who's the most valuable player, they take a look at your win-loss record, he's pretty valuable for the Braves. Yeah, and one in 13 in Valley play without Deshaun Henry. And so, one of those guys who seems to do a little bit of everything for the Redbirds and like you mentioned Kurt happy to have him back even like you mentioned in limited minutes but right now this is his eighth minute on the floor and 
Bradley up nine, looking to flip the script on that one and 13 without Ja'Shawn Henry on the floor. Fleming with a nice spin move on Kent, and Jason Kent is going to be whistled for the foul. So Fleming now very aggressive and a couple of drives to the basket. The switch at halftime right now has been more Howard Fleming, less Mark Freeman, and you wonder if it's more of a length or a size thing on the defensive end, but Howard Fleming active on offense. I mentioned earlier, hasn't played since December 21st, and so just like Deshaun Henry, if you're the head coach, Brian Wordler, you're Dan Miller, you're happy to have your guys back, and Howard Fleming in the one game he did play was Valpo with seven turnovers, and so we talked about rhythm and we talked about finding rotation. Howard Fleming here missed his last three free throws. Just one of those things where getting his legs back under him hasn't really played a competitive basketball game. But like you mentioned, Kurt, been very aggressive here to start the half for the Redbird offense. Yeah, Howard now two of six from the free throw line. It's an eight point Bradley lead. This is rink mast. And that's Bradley's first point of the second half. He makes a three. The Braves had gone better than three minutes without a point here in the second half, but Mass knocks down a three. Mass a 27% three-point shooter on the year, but shooting 43% from the three-point line over his last five, and that was, again, that ball screen offense that Bradley likes to run, and Mast, usually a roller, noticed he had the slower Schmidt on him, popped for a three-pointer, and has been shooting it really well as Fleming right there, the main source of the Redbird offense this half, really keeping the Redbirds in it so far in the second half. Very aggressive start to the half for Howard Fleming. Roberts being guarded now by Kendall Lewis, who may have got a piece of that. Mast saves it. Never touched the rim, so the shot clock continues to run. Nine on the clock. Henry's shot was blocked. Ryan Schmidt came over and splattered it. Now with Schmidt on the offensive end, but he can't get it, but he got a foul. Struggling to compete in some games in Indiana State as well. Bradley has the potential here if they get a win to get to three and three in. Could look at climbing the Valley standings there as the upcoming schedule not as challenging as it could be. Ryan Schmidt splits those free throws. McChesney tried to save it, but it's Henry that comes away with it for the Braves who have the basketball now. It's an eight point Bradley lead. Like in the lead for the Braves, 14 at the half. And in the early going for Bradley, it was a three point shooting. And now at 9 for 24, they've cooled off significantly. Illinois State seems to have found something that's worked in the perimeter, and right now it's putting Kendall Lewis on Terry Roberts and using some of that size that we talked about in the open, and Kendall Lewis making an impact on the defensive end as Roberts stuck at 14 points and has been here for some time now. Redbirds get another turnover, try to capitalize. Reeves, the miss. Schmidt, the offensive rebound. He's given Illinois State a nice lift off the bench here. Now Reeves penetrates again in traffic. Flip that up and in. Again on Wednesday, it's just one of those, when you reschedule games because of some of those cancellations, this is what's going to happen. You might have a stretch where you look like an NBA schedule. You're right, and we talked about lack of rhythm and trying to find some type of continuity, and Illinois State will have, certainly have the opportunity. And as a player, you almost prefer that because you'd rather find your rhythm playing basketball games than in multiple practices. McChesney is fouled on the lob. Liam McChesney was the one that kept the Missed free throw alive, an offensive rebound. And now he's going to be rewarded by going to the foul line as the Redbirds try to lob to the big fella. And right now, contributions for Illinois State coming from guys that certainly you wouldn't expect. Ryan Schmidt has provided a lift. Liam McChesney has played well. And the majority of this run has come with Cy Chapman on the bench. Mark Freeman yet to check in in the second half. And McChesney misses the free throw, Illinois State giving back some opportunities as they've now missed four free throws this half, but certainly from an energy standpoint, doing everything they need to make a comeback. They're beating Bradley to loose balls. They're getting offensive rebounds. They're doing all the things that Bradley was doing really well in the first half and holding Bradley to one for six shooting here to start the second half, and that is the recipe for why Illinois State here on the McChesney free throw has cut the lead to five. Mikey Howell with the basketball now. He was instrumental in Bradley's big run in the first half. Tavaninen 
Missed and it's cleared by McChesney. In and out of his hands, though. I think he was trying to flip the ball to Reeves, but he threw it away. That's a costly turnover for the Redbirds. And this is going to be a very big possession. 43-38, 14-35. Illinois State got the stop they wanted and had the potential to cut it to a one-possession game, and McChesney loses the ball. And so can they respond? And we'll see if the Illinois State defense here answers the bell and gets another stop, or if Bradley can take advantage of the McChesney miscue. Howard Fleming near steal. He tipped that away from Jason Kent. You've mentioned on several occasions, Sean, the length of Howard Fleming makes him such an excellent defender, and there we he got a near steal there. You're right, and it looks like that's kind of the recipe that Dan Muller is going to use, at least for the first five and a half here, as they've gone to the Schmidt, McChesney, Fleming, Lewis, Reeves lineup. And like we mentioned, no Mark Freeman, no Josiah Strong right now trying to use their length to give Bradley problems. And another one from Fleming there. Mast is fouled. He was, his first attempt was blocked. His second attempt, he drew contact. So Rink Mast to the free throw line. Dan Muller not happy. Proud not seeing that one that way either, but it'll be Rink Mast to the free throw line. And we'll see if we have a better angle from our side. Fleming definitely got the first one clean, and it looked like Rink Mast did a good job going straight back up, and they called Fleming with the body on the second one. Yeah, and I'm sorry, he's not shooting. He's, they just gave him the ball out of bounds. So here's Howell now gives it up. Tavaninen's look for three is missed again, and it's going to be a foul on the floor against Illinois State. And another one that could be deflating. We'll see how Illinois State responds, but yet another stop. But can't get it done as a foul on the box out. And Devinen and really struggling right now, 0 for 6 from the three-point line. 74 of his 98 attempts this year from the three-point line. He had 14 against Northern Iowa. He had 13 against Missouri State, but right now struggling to get it going from the arc. And that's been to the Redbirds' benefit as he's missed some open ones, two here in this half. Now Mass goes one-on-one -on -one with Chapman. This is Howell, six on the shot clock. Mast spins and scores. That's Bradley's second field goal of the second half, six minutes in. The Braves have only two field goals here in the second half, so the Redbirds' defense has certainly picked up a little bit here. Chesney backs in on Kent. A little half hook goes down, nice move. Good to see Liam McChesney, if you're Dan Muller and the Redbirds coaching staff, have some success here in this half. They feel like he has the pieces to put it together, and we haven't seen Liam McChesney with his back to the basket much, but they're a very capable post move. The right-hand finish, and another stop for Illinois State here as they continue to push the pace. Kent had a good look. Strong had a good look. Neither would go down. Howell. Works baseline, slips it to Hickman. Mikey Howell is about as good of a passer as we have seen this year, is right there. He almost sent Connor Hickman on the cut. Four assists now, and only 11 minutes played, and right there, like I said, he kind of led Hickman to it, saw Reeves standing flat-footed, threw the bounce pass on the move, and a really good find for an easy layup for Connor Hickman. Kendall Lewis. A three ball. That's his first three of the night. That was really made by Josiah Strong. And Josiah Strong, a very capable shooter who last year shot 37% from three, this year 48. And largely it's because he's passing up the bad ones. And right there, Antonio Reeves, a three ball. And suddenly this is a one point game. And just as I was saying, is passing up. The good ones to get great ones, Josiah's for ball game. We do in Illinois State, four of their last five from the floor. Bradley struggling, three of 13 this half. We'll see what they get out of a call timeout, try to calm things down and take the crowd out of it a little bit here as the stop gives Illinois State a chance to take the lead. Lewis is going to be whistled for the foul on Deshaun Henry. Possession 
Henry working on side. Chapman flipped up a shot, no good, but tipped out of bounds by the Redbirds, so Bradley maintains possession. Howell, Leons, Hickman, Henry, and Roberts are the five on the floor for Bradley. Lewis, Strong, Chapman, Reeves, and Fleming are the five for Illinois State. The officials may want to see who that ball was off of. Wondering if we're looking if the ball hit the rim. Henry kind of shot a, an awkward scoop layup as he was pivoting. And we're either looking at if the ball went offside Chapman's hand or if we're getting a reset on the shot clock here. From our angle, it looked like Chapman got his hand on it. Shot clock is at 20. Bradley basketball under the basket. Flip it out now to Roberts. This is Hickman working the baseline. Flips it into Henry. Had a shot blocked, got it back. Pump fake, put it up, put it in. His first points of the night. First points in about a month. Great second effort there as Kendall Lewis blocked the first one. And you're okay with that if you're Illinois State as. Cy Chapman loses position, and that's why you see Bradley 1 and 13 in the Valley without Ja'Shawn Henry. He's one of those guys who makes winning plays, and right there, a second effort bucket, a steal, and now in the paint, can't finish. Looks like he took a shot in the eye as he's slow to get back down the floor. Edwards have numbers, and will pull it out and set up their half court offense as Dan Muller calls for a set here. Chapman now, this is strong with 10 on the shot clock. Skip pass to Howard Fleming Jr., six to shoot. To the paint, scoop shot up and in, difficult shot, Howard Fleming. Right now, just based on energy, 10-28 in the game with a one point lead. You get the sense that this is Illinois State's game for the taking as Bradley has slowed things down considerably on offense. Josiah Strong and the Redbirds in front after the three ball from Strong. The Redbirds have outscored the Braves 25 to nine in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Roberts tried to slip the ball to Ja'Shawn Henry, and Cy Chapman came away with it, but he threw it right at Dan Muller. And Dan Muller has seen enough from Cy Chapman right now as those two have had their issues with Cy Chapman's performance. As you remember, he didn't play the end of the Eastern Michigan game in overtime. Muller went right to Schmidt on the turnover. Right now, this year for the Redbird team, in big moments, it's been Josiah Strong. It feels like right now every big shot, every big moment, every momentum swing has kind of been Josiah Strong's moment and a huge three-pointer from the corner there. As Illinois State has done a great job this half getting out in transition, and that's more of their game. They want to score, they want to run, and the last three three-pointers for Illinois State have come because they've had numbers running the floor and throwing it ahead. Roberts' missed shot is controlled by Illinois State. The ball was free and it was Fleming who came away with it. Redbirds are winning some of these 50-50 balls now. Fleming down the lane, hit a shot block, got it back. Reeves tries to create, step back. Antonio Reeves missed the three. Leons tried to connect with Mast, but he couldn't. And right there, you're seeing Ryan Schmidt on the camera because of the effort. And right there, he was making rink mass work, pushed him out to about eight feet as opposed to catching on the block. And Leon's used to having mass way lower in position. And Schmidt did a great job pushing him out, which led to the turnover. Ryan Schmidt has provided some really big minutes here in the second half, as has Howard Fleming, as we've seen less of Cy Chapman and Mark Freeman during Illinois State's run. Reeves. Had a shot block, it was Terry Roberts who swatted it away. No doubt that Fleming and McChesney and Ryan Schmidt off that Illinois State bench have, have played well here tonight. 
and there are very few advantages to the COVID shutdown situation and the postponements, but one of those for Illinois State is those guys were getting more minutes, and Ryan Schmidt played 28 minutes at Wisconsin, and guys that you wouldn't necessarily expect to contribute. Maybe Dan Muller has found something. As we mentioned, he's played 11 guys tonight. A bailout three. The shot clock was expiring, and Reeves buries a three. That is individual skill, and Antonio Reeves has it in bunches, and right there, late shot clock offense. He clears everyone out, step back three-pointer, and Reeves has added that to his game, and it's becoming a consistent shot of his as more really good defense from Liam McChesney and Ryan Schmidt inside. The 10th Bradley turnover off the steal. Strong and Reeves, two-man game here. Under eight minutes to play. Six on the shot clock. Reeves trying to create another step back. Roberts tried to slip it down to Rink Mast, and it was the long arms again of Kendall Lewis. You pointed that out. When Lewis switched out, his length has bothered, bothered Terry Roberts. And Illinois State has gone away from switching that ball screen. We talked earlier, they were switching everything on the floor and just losing matchups. And Dan Muller has found a five that he's comfortable. And really, it starts, like you mentioned, Kurt, with Kendall Lewis taking away what Terry Roberts was having success with early as Illinois State continues to find success with Antonio Reeves into the line on that easy foul that he picked up. We talked about how sometimes someone just needs to see the ball go into the basket. And after those two free throws, Reeves four of five from the three-point line as Ryan Schmidt takes away Rink Mast again. Cannot understate what, what he's brought to the table. I'm talking about Ryan Schmidt. McChesney tried to save that one. A nice created move on the baseline, but Reeves couldn't get it to go. But yeah, certainly Schmidt and McChesney off that Redbird bench have given Illinois State a big time lift. Liam McChesney has played 11 minutes the month of January. Really nice move there by Rink Mast. And so has Ryan Schmidt, and so it's hard to even put into words, going from almost no action, both missed a game and played 11 minutes this month to jumping into guarding Rink Mast and Malave Leons and doing more than a good job so far on those two. Six on the shot clock. Here's Reeves now with it. Kendall Lewis, foul line jumper. McChesney tried to keep it alive. He did. Lewis came away with it. Another extra possession for the Redbirds, and right now Liam McChesney again keeping the ball alive. Probably the third extra possession he has afforded the Redbirds this half. Schmidt backs in on Mass, but he couldn't make the shot. Now it's Howell back in the front court. We've got a whistle and a foul against Illinois State. The question right now for Brian Wardle is where is the offense going to come from? And early, they were exploiting the Redbird defense that was switching. And since the Redbirds made the adjustment this half to guarding the ball screens differently, it's been a struggle for Bradley to get really anything going offensively in the second half. Five turnovers in the last six minutes, the length of Illinois State really bothering the Braves at all five positions. Tavanine and had his pocket picked. Cy Chapman came away with it, and it was again the length of Fleming that knocked that ball away from Tavanine. And the biggest, I think, takeaway right now is that Illinois State is proving they can get contributions from a lot of guys in a lot of ways. And I think we've talked about it, Kurt, but everyone knows the big three for the Redbirds are going to score. Reeves, Strong, and Chapman are kind of your go-tos on the offensive end of the floor, and so. 
if you're two of the other guys on the floor, how do you contribute? And right now we've seen McChesney, Schmidt, and Fleming do it defensively, offensive rebounding, effort plays, and that's that's how you get a good team when you have three guys who can score and the two other ones are supplementing them with winning plays. Leons clears the missed shot by Chapman. Down to the front court. Slip the pass down to Mast, who's fouled, and Rick Mast to the free throw line. Fleming got him on the arm. And that's the fourth foul now on Fleming. We'll see who gets him here. And Cy Chapman attempted to take a charge. Howard Fleming just a step late as he was sprinting back. And he made the face like I almost had that one. And we've seen the block shots from the Redbird guard. And we've talked about his length. One tonight, four total for the team as he just missed that one. And right here, under five minutes. And Rink Mast has the ability here to cut it to a four-point lead. And Bradley's been in situations like this before on the other end. They were up seven with six to go against Loyola. Up two with a minute left against Missouri State and up three with seven minutes left against Indiana State. And so not really a surprise that Bradley finds themselves in another close conference game here with 4.50 to go in Redbird Arena. That is Bradley's first made free throw of the night. And it comes with 4.45 to play in the game. Lewis around Mast. There he was. We mentioned him in the open as the player to watch and getting some secondary scoring. And Lewis just picked up the foul there, a blocking foul on Mikey Howell. He picks up his third again. Howard Fleming is on the floor with four. Dan Muller deciding to just keep him in the game. Howell misses the one and one front end of it. Redbirds the basketball on a seven point advantage as we approach four minutes left in this one. Reeves again trying to create off the glass and in. Antonio Reeves has the ball on a string right now and doing whatever he wants to whichever Bradley defender tries to step up and this time it's Mikey Howell and Antonio Reeves a series of moves there and just too strong for the smaller Howell as he finishes for six on the night from the free throw line 342nd in the country only shoots 64 percent as a team as Mast makes both here and certainly three for eight is not going to help that percentage and not help Bradley win very many games as they've had their opportunities here in the half just haven't connected from the free throw line Mast with 14 points now. He has tied Terry Roberts for team high. Roberts has not scored in the second half. Terry Roberts actually made the three-pointer to make it 35-15 and has not had a basket since. Fleming dribbled the ball on the baseline, so it's a turnover against Illinois State. Three twenty-two on the clock in a seven-point game, and so Bradley has enough time to make a comeback. They don't have to go through anything overly quick, but certainly will be cognizant of what is left on the clock here as they look to make a comeback. And this is a big possession. If you're within four or five with three minutes left, it's a lot more manageable as Mast gets an open look and, and knocks he it knocks down it down. And Mast is the guy right now for the Braves. And now Illinois State. This is a a spot. Where all of them, I mean, this is what college basketball is all about. Nice tight game with fans getting into it. Final three minutes of this one. Illinois State emptied one side of the floor and just ran a simple ball screen. And so it looks like they're content running the clock. As four on the clock, Strong ends up with it at about 28 And feet. knocks down and a three. We said earlier the big moments this season have somewhat belonged to Josiah Strong. and. A truly big one there as Mass hits the three on one end, but Josiah Strong answers on the other and puts the Redbirds back up seven. His fourth three-point make of the night, and now it's Howard Fleming Jr. with a steal. Can he beat Roberts down the floor? Roberts came back to block it. Good hustle by Terry Roberts to swat that one away, but Fleming has really 
been a thorn in the Braves' side at the perimeter. And that's what you envision when you have a big guard like Howard Fleming. His line tonight, nine points, five rebounds, two of which are offensive, two steals, a block, and an assist. And so he's putting numbers into every category. And right there, a humongous steal to keep the lead at seven and give the Redbirds the opportunity to burn some more clock. Bradley not going to foul yet, and so they're going to try to play it out and get a stop here. And we'll see if it's Reeves or Strong, as it has been most of the half here. Reeves works behind a screen from Chapman. They double him, and now it's Lewis. Fleming with five on the shot clock to the paint. And his pass is stolen away by Roberts. He was looking for Josiah Strong. Now it's Kent, and he travels. And you almost wonder why Bradley didn't do that earlier in that defensive sequence. They ran Jason Kent at Antonio Reeves off of Howard Fleming, who one of two from three, but two of six in the free throw line, not necessarily known for his shooting. And right there, got the ball to Reeves' hand. And the first time we've really seen Bradley do anything to try to get Reeves or Strong out of their rhythm this half. They double-team Reeves with some pressure, and now Lewis brings the ball across the timeline. Ninety seconds to play. Lewis thought about the three, stepped inside the arc, and knocked down the jumper. Roberts penetrates, he's fouled by Lewis. Two free throws now coming for Terry Roberts, held scoreless here in the second half. team that a trap is coming and so said so don't be surprised and obviously time and clock situation we're going to see some pressure from the Bradley Braves and with the score at eight right now potentially seven Illinois State has the ability to knock down some free throws and put this one on ice first point of the second half now for Roberts as he makes both foul shots he's got 16 for the game Howard Fleming is fouled right at the timeline, right at midcourt by Roberts. It'll be Fleming who will walk down to shoot the free throw. It'll be one and one. Both teams try to get a quick huddle in here. Brian Wardle with his team and Dan Muller with his. Here's that foul right at the half court line. Yep, just a typical press breaker there from Illinois State. The inbounder ran up the middle to beat the trap. Josiah Strong did a great job not catching too close to the baseline, so he wasn't trapped. And right there you saw Terry Roberts and Cy Chapman come together. And so about eight of the ten players on the floor got together to have a discussion and separate the two. Yeah. And we'll go to the line and things will continue as normal here. Nice job by the officials to kind of step in and defuse that situation. We'll see how quick Bradley goes here with 105 on the clock. They do have some sets to run out of made free throws. And anything right now is probably going to be a three-pointer and a very good offensive rebounding team who's been held to two offensive rebounds this half. Will certainly be crashing the glass hard, but with seven fouls, Illinois State with a good box out has potential to draw and over the back a push of some sort and maybe get to back to the free throw line here without having to inbound it against the press if they can get a stop. Mast another step out three. Rink Mast missed that one. Roberts in the right place for the right time, and he nearly got a three point opportunity, but instead. He'll get a couple of free throws. There's that offensive rebound. With Evansville, two of the next three, Illinois State could build some momentum here. And so credit to the Redbirds for not giving up early when they were down 20 in the first half. Reeves 
gives it up now to Strong, who steps through a double team and gives it back to Reeves. He works the baseline, he flipped it up and in. The 10th 20 point game of Antonio Reeves this season as Terry Roberts does everything he can to keep Bradley close. Tavaninen reached in on Reeves. So Reeves, with a very slow start to this one, is now at his scoring average. He's at 20 points. He's actually at 20.8 per game. And again, the 13th top scorer in the country will now walk to the foul line for Illinois State and try and really put the nail in the coffin on this one. It'd be hard to pinpoint exactly the moment that things really turned. It was nine, it was seven. Illinois State yeah, crawled back and then all of a sudden, Strong and Reeves connecting on some three pointers and it really got out of hand for Bradley. But again, it'd be tough to overstate the importance of Liam McChesney who hasn't played and plus minus is certainly not indicative of everything that happened in a game. But with that free throw dropping, Liam McChesney has a plus 15 off the bench for the Redbirds. And so leading the team in that category, he has really contributed in a variety of ways. Roberts takes it to the rim, so Terry Roberts has scored the Braves' last two field goals. And a quick foul, down to 20.2 seconds to go. Roberts picked up the foul, that's his fourth. And if you're Bradley, just some stuff you need to figure out and contributions from some guys Ville Tavinen in 0 for 6 from 3, and Malave Leons had scored double figures 6 straight until the last two, and now tonight 4 points. And so it was the Terry Roberts rink mast show, and Bradley, much like we mentioned with the Kendall Lewis, in need of some secondary scoring, and Terry Roberts certainly a handful, Kurt, like we've talked about the first time we've seen him, certainly a lock for the all-newcomer team here in the Valley. He's been very impressive tonight, but as a whole, Illinois State really locked down in the second half, and... That should about do it. Kavanaugh stepped on the sideline, and the Redbird faithful are on their feet to salute the Redbirds, who've scored 48 points in the second half to erase a 14-point deficit. It's the second largest comeback win in school history. The Redbirds erased a 21-point deficit and won a game in 1989 against...